Welcome to an episode of British Fight Tips. What we're going to do is some proper street fighting. None of this Jackie Chan shit. What I want you to do is I want you to ball your fists, duck your heads, just get some fucking windmills going, yeah? Windmills, heads down, and windmill. This is going to really help protect you because the top of your head, hardest bit. Doesn't hurt if you get hit there. So windmills, if you've got a set of keys, wedge in between your fingers, that'll really get some nice dagger motions going. Number two for the fight tips, balls. Always go for the balls. You want to grab them real tight and twist. If you get a good twist on there, it'll be the biggest man will fall to his knees and plead for mercy. Fight tip number three. Oi, uh, prick. I'm going to show you guys the real fight tips. Come with me. So I'm lucky enough to be joined by Shane Faison from Fight Tips. If you haven't seen that channel, links and everything for Shane will be in the description below, so make sure to check them out and learn some cool shit. But we're also going to teach you some more cool shit here today that doesn't involve windmilling and sets of keys. <laughs> today what we're going to be focusing on is heavy bag drills. Because a lot of people have these in their gyms, they're easy to come by, but a lot of people get a little bit scared by them or end up trying to be a bit... Mayweathery throwing 800 punches in 30 seconds. Yes, yes. Yeah. And what Shane's going to take you through today is going to take you through three solid combinations on the heavy bag that you're going to be able to utilize for conditioning, for improving power transfer, and footwork. Yes, this is true. Um, so I want to go over the basics and then I want to cover more advanced stuff. So whether you've never thrown a punch before in your life or you're a little more experienced, I think uh, hopefully I can share some stuff with you that will, that will benefit your training. On to combination numero uno. Combination one is going to be jab, cross, jab. A lot of people throw the jab, cross, hook or the one, two, three, but I like the jab, cross, jab because it's nice and linear down the center and we get to use our range. So the jab is the lead arm punching straight down the pipe. There's going to be a little bit of a hip rotation and we're going to put pressure on our lead foot. So as that foot touches the ground or as the pressure goes into the ball of our foot, that's when the lead punch should land. Then we turn our hips, rotate on our rear foot for the cross, that's more of the power punch. Put a lot of power into that shot, then the bag's gonna be doing this. And I'm then going to adjust with the last shot, which is gonna be another jab. If the bag is far away, then I'm gonna step in for a power jab. If I don't wanna jam myself up, then I can step back and catch it as my opponent or as the bag steps in. And this is where we're working our footwork. We're going in, we're going out. The shots are linear, our footwork is gonna be linear, okay? So again, stepping in on the jabs and crosses or stepping backwards on the back pedal as they're running into me, they're also running in to the punches. If you have a partner who's gonna do this with, holding the bag can be really beneficial here because you're gonna stop that swing and be able to transfer a little bit more power more safely because there's gonna be no spinning in the bag. But don't worry if you don't have a partner, just allow the movement and the swing of the bag to help you adjust and have to move with it. Yep. Because then it's gonna improve your footwork, it's gonna improve your timing, distance and range and all that. So you're outside of range with the bag, I can't hit it, which means I need to step in. If I step in on the lead foot, now I'm gonna make contact. So you're gonna yeah. step in on the jab. So you can see out of range there, we create that, cover that distance, bang, by stepping the lead foot. Now, instead of keeping that wide base with your feet, you're also gonna step another six inches like you did with the lead, but with the rear now, and as punch. you turn the hip, yes, transfer the energy into that So we cross. step, punch, connect, right foot comes in with the right, bang. Yes. And then we... And then from here, it depends. How is the bag swinging? Right now, it's right in front of you, so I would just, right here, turn the hip over and throw another power jab. Bang. Boom. Yeah. And then back out. You can break the tempo up, too. It doesn't yep. have to be bop, bop, bop. It could be bop, bop, bop. One, two. One of those things is to not worry too much about constantly having to be, oh ah, shit, I missed that one punch. If those come in fine and then you're off balance, don't worry, reset and just finish with that jab on a, on a later shot. Getting too strict and too, too robotic is what we don't want here. That's why we're gonna use this heavy bag, use the swing or use our body movement to create more good habits. If you miss fire, it doesn't matter, carry on, move on. Yeah, you wanna keep it realistic to a fight too. If, if my opponent isn't standing right in front of me and I'm not gonna hit him with a punch, why yeah. throw it? Right? If I have to take another step in order to land that jab, then I'm gonna do that. Yep. Or maybe he's throwing something back and I need to slip. Now we're gonna to start to work in some defense. So maybe it's jab cross, I slip, I move my head, and then I finish the last shot. So just because you have a set combo doesn't mean you have to throw it bop, 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 sequential in a row. You can break the tempo up, you can add some defense in between, you can add some movement, some footwork to keep it more realistic. On to combination two. All right, so combo number two now, we're gonna go with a cross hook cross. This is your power combo here. So we can lead off with the first combo, which is a jab cross jab. And now we're in perfect position for our cross hook cross. So I'm gonna throw the right hand 
Now we're gonna throw our hook. So my hips are loaded up. I'm gonna turn my lead foot, lead knee, lead hip. Everything's gonna turn at the same time. It should look more like this. Now this is very robotic. This is kind of dramatic, but this is what your, the motion of your body should be doing. You can see the foot is pivoting on the ball. The knee is turning with it and the lead hook is going. And in order to do this, I need to keep the weight on my rear foot. And then I'm just gonna finish with another two, another cross. So it's right hand, left hook, right hand. Just before I forget, is when you throw your punches, imagine you're trying to drill your index finger and your middle finger. You're trying to drill it into their head. Obviously, we're not gonna keep our fingers extended, but imagine they still are. I'm drilling it in. And that way, we're really gonna hit with those two knuckles. So from that, you can see we're learning to build up those combinations, rolling one into the other. And what that's gonna allow you to do is then when you're free flowing on the bag, you can just say in your head combination one, two, or three, and you can flow them one into the other. So when you're getting tired and you're struggling, you're always gonna have in the back of that head that pop, pop, bang, you know, those two little combinations. But as we showed you, we're gonna have that one, step in, two, step away, three, that straight right, left hook, straight right. Definitely one of the, the, the easiest things to do on a bag is have less combinations, but focus on them more so that you're not having those moments of confusion. Absolutely, yeah, I would say even in sparring, you could dedicate an entire round to just using the jab. And I bet your, your sparring partner won't even notice until two minutes <laughs> in, right? Yeah. I've just been using the jab, but there's so many different variations of the jab. I can go to the head, I can go to the body, I can slip jab, I can feint the jab and come in. But with these combos, what I wanted to show was left, right, left, right, left, right. So it's one, two, one, two, three, two, and then you can just go right back into the one, two, one. So you can flow and make this one continuous yeah. combo if you wanted to, but as we've been talking about, keep it realistic. And this is what I want to do, is make sure that when you get on the back, you're getting confident. But we also want to help improve. So combination three, it's gonna look a little bit more difficult, but don't worry, not too much. That's the pose, that's your advert pose right there. Fight tips. <laughs> <laughs> So for combination three, we're going to be coming a little bit lower and we're going to be focusing on taking out some of that body. So if the guy's got a good guard up at top and he's holding up here and you can't break through, we're going to start wanting to work that body. They say, you kill the body, you kill the head. People tend to be at, be at range, but then to hit the body, they'll lean forward and come in like this. Mm -hmm. and what we want to be seeing is a level change. So as you throw in those other combinations, we want to see that level change and then come in and start ripping the body. So Shane's going to take you through how to hit these kind of uppercut body shots without flexing and messing up the wrist, how to use it on a heavy bag. It's gonna be slightly different to if you were sparring yep. or hitting like a water bag maybe. Exactly. But obviously not a lot of people have those, so we're gonna show you how to do this safely and effectively. You don't wanna hinge so much at the lower back because if I do that, I'm asking to be uppercut right in the head. So what I wanna do instead is lower my level, like Lex was saying, by bending the knees, getting lower. So even just with a jab to the body, I'm not gonna punch down because look, now I'm exposed. So instead, I'm going to lower my level and then keep my chin behind my shoulder. It's the same thing when I'm throwing hooks or uppercuts to the body. So the next combo, combo number three, is going to be a left uppercut or a shovel hook to the body, a right uppercut to the body, and then we're going to stand up and hit them to the head. So the idea here is if we hit them to the body a couple times, they're going to start to drop their hands and protect with their elbows. And you can see that my head is exposed now for that left hook. Let's break it down. What I'm going to do is bring my shoulder towards my opposite knee. Not literally, but that's the path that your body wants to follow. So I'm going to bend my knees and like a slim I'm going to rotate down, bringing my shoulder towards the opposite knee. When I do that, I don't drop my lead hand because now I'm asking to get countered. So I keep this hand up and now I'm rotated, loaded up for this left hook to the body and I'm aiming for the spine. So I'm digging into them. I'm not going around. I'm going right through their ribs, aiming for the spine. Now from here, I'm going to lift this hand up to my head and I'm going to rip the other hand to the body. From here, I'm loaded up now. And all I'm gonna do is extend my legs a little bit as I rotate, and I taught you how to throw that hook. So we're gonna put the rear, or weight in the rear foot, and rotate on the lead foot. Boom. Okay, so all together, it's uppercut, uppercut, hook to the head. And again, we can combine this entire combo, starting with the jab, cross, jab. Jab, cross, jab, cross, hook, cross. Lower my level, you can see after I throw that right hand, now I bring the shoulder towards the opposite knee. Uppercut, uppercut. Left hook. Once again in full. And I can break the tempo up. There you go. One of probably the most in-depth reviews <laughs> on how to throw three simple combinations. But you now have no excuse to be able to head into that gym and confidently take on one of these heavy bags. Different bags are gonna have different movements and different swings. If it's a solid, heavy, heavy bag, they're usually very low and they're full of sand and you hit them and they don't budge, mm -hmm. 
be careful. Wrap up the hands, use some heavier ounce gloves, and make sure that you're protecting yourself because that's going to have no give. Something like this that swings and have a bit of uh, a bit of go to it, has a bit of bend when you hit it, kind of flexes. This you can really start letting rip on and, yeah. and use this on a continual basis. Exactly, yeah. These are your money makers, so you want to make sure that you're protecting them. Yeah. So there you go. That's everything that you need to focus on a heavyweight bag and get in the gym, get that cardio, start learning to transfer that power, those punches, get your range, get your distance, and then we're gonna move on to some more in-depth, kind of full-on MMA style bag works in the next video. So, thanks to Shane, thanks to Fight Tips, which if you didn't know, are for the underdogs. We're out. <laughs> <laughs> Lately I've been doing shit different Cooking like a chef, I've been all up in the kitchen Had to make a move, had to make a little distance A lot of people tripping, they could never see the vision Fuck that, tell them bounce